Sarah Steelman is the Missouri State Treasurer and candidate for uh, governor. Sarah, um, good to have you on the uh, program. I don't, I, really, I know very little about you except what you have said to me and what I have seen it, your record on. And I just want to go uh, uh, over some of these things. Tell the American people about the settlement check that you refused to issue as a state treasurer. Well, Glenn, let me first say you, you are a man after my heart when you talk about we the people. <laughs> but uh, here's what happened on that. There was a, a, a sexual harassment lawsuit, and uh, the governor of our state wanted to settle it. with the. It was uh, against the, Depart the director of the Department of Agriculture, and they made a secret deal using taxpayer money, and I thought it was wrong, and I stopped payment on the check. You actually they issued the, che the check, and you just stopped payment on it? Yes. Wow. And this, this was against your own Republican Party? I, unfortunately, it was. Right. And it, was and it was done in the wrong way. The, the, the sexual harassment charges that were made were, uh, were very serious and very stunning from, from a director right. <laughs> of our own Department of Agriculture. And, and, you, and you felt this is the people's money and? Yeah, I thought it was the people's money, and that was the wrong way to be spending it. It wasn't right, it wasn't done correctly, and it shouldn't be spent to settle a secret settlement for right. a sexual harassment If the case. people want to settle it, it would be settled out in the open. It's the people's money, and they should know. God exactly. Bless you. All right, tell, exactly. Me about, tell me about corn ethanol plants. Listen to this. You know, you've never heard this from a politician before. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, that's the other thing I had in my office. It was a, a strong conflict of interest policy that prohibited elected officials from participating in a uh, uh, program that we have. So, in other words, I don't think it's right for elected officials to use taxpayer money for their own personal benefit or investment. So okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> America, she's really, really brilliant, but a very, very modest and poor storyteller on this particular issue. Sarah, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, um, Missouri... The politicians were voting and saying, we need even more ethanol than even the federal government says. So we need to build all of these ethanol plants. At the same time, the same politicians said, oh, and by the way, you should be able to get grant money to build these ethanol plants. The politicians were then going out and borrowing taxpayer money. The politicians were to build the ethanol plants that they themselves said had to be built. Right? You've got it. You've got it exactly right. Yeah. And you, st and you stopped that, oh, you evil, evil person, you. <laughs> I stopped it, and I guess I made a lot of people mad because the legislature undid what I, my conflict of interest policy by passing a law at the end of uh, the session that said it was okay to do that. Um, you want to build refineries, and this is something that I don't think I've ever heard from a politician. You're not just wanting to build refineries and think that it's good to build refineries. You're actually saying, build them in my backyard if we have to. I am saying that as governor, I want to go out and use our economic development tools to get an oil refinery in Missouri. We're, we're, we're right in the heart of the country. We're strategically located. And as you know, there hasn't one, been one built here in the United States for 30 years. Okay. You have a master's in economics. Um, how, much, how much trouble do you think <coughs> the United States and your state are in if we don't stop with the partisan bullcrap and hiding behind all of these arguments and just solve the problems logically. Oh, I think we're in a, a, a lot of trouble. Yes, we need to, to talk to each other about these problems and solve them logically and quit uh, being so partisan about everything because, you know, if something's right, it's good. It's right for everybody. If something's wrong, it's wrong for everybody. So quit the partisan bickering and let's get down to working together and solving problems. Um, the, uh, 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 is your state, uh, I mean, uh, states all over, I mean, New York, they're now talking about selling the bridges in New York um, because, you know, they're, they're saying we have such a huge deficit. And I keep, I shout at the newspaper every day. Oh, I do. I'm full-fledged nuts. <laughs> um, I, I look at the newspaper every day, and here in New York, they're saying, we should sell these bridges. We've got to raise more taxes. No, you don't. You have to stop spending money. Could you please explain to the American people that taxes don't work? It is spending that changes the course. Well, absolutely, and that's what my campaign has been about, is, is telling people we need smaller government, not taxing the people more. Let people do what, with their money what they want to do with their money. That's what grows the economy. 
You know, I um, there's a story, and I think we're going to do this tomorrow in the real story. That, um, and I don't know if you follow this. I'm such a freak for even knowing this, but the Tory Party over in uh, England it is the Conservative Party, and uh, they have they've been passing all these green laws and everything else, and they're losing power, et cetera, et cetera. Well, they decided, hey, you know what? Maybe we should actually be an alternative to the other party and actually be conservative. You know, they now lead in their national polls by 22 percentage points. What, what is it that the, the, the people in your own party don't understand? They're getting their butts kicked because they don't stand for common sense conservative principles. Well, I, I couldn't agree with you more. And that's what I'm trying to talk about. And they keep trying to shut me down because I'm saying that we need to get back to our conservative principles. That's what made this country great. That's what people believe in, and that's what works. And that's why the Tory party has that kind of, of approval rating. Yeah. And that's also why Congress has only a 9% approval rating, is because all they know how to do is borrow and spend money, and that money is coming from the taxpayers of this country. I mean, they've completely forgotten about the fact that that is the hard-earned dollars of the people in this country. They get up every day and work hard, and Congress spends their money like you know, that they have no appreciation for at all where it comes from. Yeah. Um, let me just uh, end with uh, this. I want to just show, show a picture. This is uh, uh, your son and a, a birthday present that, uh, I mean, that's just wrong. What are you thinking? You're giving your son a gun? <laughs> Can you believe I had the audacity to do that? I mean, and he doesn't look responsible. I mean, he's pointing at who could, you don't know who's on the other side of that wall. I mean, what are you thinking there, Sarah? You know what? I'm a strong believer in our Second <laughs> Amendment rights. All right. Just Thanks, like Sarah. every right yep. we have in the Constitution. Thanks, Sarah. I appreciate it. Uh, Thank you. All right.